Hello, everybody. Welcome to this. Wait, I think this should be this way. No, no, no. this way. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live filming of The View, where we are at General Assembly. Hi, it's Aisha. Hi, it's Michael. Joanna. Hi, it's Aisha. <laughs> And Meg, and we're here, and we're going to be talking to all kinds of interesting people as we snag them. Here's one now. How's GA been for you? It's been so fun. I've been seeing a lot of people. People are coming up to me going, are you Asia?" And I'm like, maybe. So it's been fun. <laughs> were you at Lareda Days? I was at Lareda Days. We had Dee Van, um, Dee Van Diver, Vandiver, and one of the things she said was that the Holy Book of Faith, the Holy Book of Face, um has connected a lot of people. And she talked about the Center for uh, Ethical Living, and that was amazing. So it was a great Lorena. Well, I'm just getting here yesterday. I just got to GA. No, Nature, no? you can sit in okay. front of me. It's okay. <laughs> and uh, yesterday was my daughter's fourth birthday, so oh. I wasn't going to miss that for anything. So I flew in in the middle of the tropical storm yesterday, and I'm really happy to be here. So I, I have been here since like Monday, but my family is coming in this afternoon because I will be in fi walking in the service of the living tradition. Yay. So they, my, my husband wants to see his, his money and where it paid off. <laughs> Hi. Oh, wait. I'm going to strangle uh, Meg with this. Hi, it's Hank. And um, it's been a very wet GA. You know, people talked about the wrath. Like there was a, you know, justice GA and this was going to be the wrath of God GA. But it hasn't been. It's been okay so far, Nothing. you know. It was good, and um, uh, and we're, if we if we said that we're at the CLF booth, have we talked about that? Have we talked about the like yes. the the CLF wall of shame, right? Everybody that that have have messed up here at the UUA, we're gonna put their picture up there, and um, that would be all of us. And uh, um, if you say so, all right. And um, uh, but it's, it's good. It's, I've had a great time, and um, uh, and I, I love uh, I'm loving New Orleans, where where I'd never been before, and. And uh, it's it's great. It's um, I admit, as I, as I walked around the city the other day, someone said like I, I thought of friends who went like, oh, I miss it when I, I miss old New York or I miss old Boston. I was like, move to move to New Orleans. It's still a little gritty. It's still a little dangerous. I kind of like that. And so I I miss that. So it's it's good. It's really good. Wait, let me I'm gonna pass the mic around. Wait, okay, here you go. No, here you go. No, 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 that's great. No, that way. The other way. <laughs> Live is different for us. <laughs> so there were a lot of pre-conferences going on. The Laredo one, the UU Ministers one, the Administrators, uh, some organizers of various kinds. So a lot of people kind of feel like maybe it's time to go home. But it's just starting and lots of stuff's going to go on. And here comes Bart Frost to tell us. Oh, here comes Jake the sneaking in from behind. Look who it is. Hey, Hello, us. everyone. Visiting us from the, the UCF. I'm so glad to be here. Praise <laughs> Jesus. Oh, the Christian Fellowship. Are you guys on the other side? This is a, this is a raid from the UU Christian Fellowship. <laughs> Fellowship is everywhere. What you been yeah. doing, Jake? What's a Christian you fellowship? You see power with the church of the larger fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> we we've been sitting over there wishing that we were as cool and uh, as the as the church of the larger fellowship. That's what that everyone makes, does. It that makes so much of a difference for so many people well, in we so many all ways. Our money to the poor. <laughs> <laughs> and and look who else is here. Amanda Weatherspoon, come and say hi. Talking to oh, the so light. Like, Oh, talking to the chalice. Hi. <laughs> you drove here, right? I did. I drove all the way from California. Zoinks. Get Grand Canyon. I saw that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. No storm. No storm. There's a there's that'll preach. There's a message in that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you work now with the Blue yes, Ministry right Network. Oh yes, yes I am. Yeah, I'm on the leadership team for the Blue Men. And what does Blue stand for? Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> How many folks are here? From Blue? From Blue, yeah. I think Blue uh, brought 200 additional people to uh, was already right. signed up. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. Fabulous. Yep. That's great. Well, Yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, here we've got Margie Levine Young. Hey, Margie. Hey, 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 this is a fantastic mic you've got here. I'm absolutely this, You were carrying it. the flame. Yeah. So Can what's I up hold with you? It? So what's up with me is that I'm sitting in the hall streaming... The video live to our offsite participants and to uh, and to the public, and so I hang out with my computers and uh, and do the streaming. 
So I'm what's up right at this particular moment as we're trying to get the Ruby Bridges suite that's going to be happening tonight at 10 to be streamed. That's really exciting. That Ruby Bridges stream seemed like a late, a late addition to the program, right? It is a late addition, and we can actually only stream it if we get permission from all of the artists, all of the performers. And so I'm about to print permission slips to make sure we can get that to happen. So I'm not promising it's going to happen, but I, I imagine we'll get everyone to give us permission. That's way cool. Brian, come on over. Joanna, you talk to your buddy Brian from okay. Texas. Here we go. Is, is he from Texas? Yeah. Well, so we, we, we have, so all the way, all the way from Scotland, we have, okay, actually from Texas, <laughs> by way of Texas, uh, Texas. Yeah, uh, is my friend and colleague, the wonderful Reverend Brian Ferguson. So tell us how, how Ministry Days and GA has been for you. It's actually been fabulous. I came with a certain trepidation because we've had so much upheaval in our in our movement and in the ministry and we weren't quite sure what was happening but it's actually turned out to be really quite a celebration and the celebration of opportunity because I think people are really seeing that we're, we can't go on with doing business as usual so we're actually kind of going on like how can we use this as a transformational moment and people seem to be embracing it and it'll be interesting to see if that continues on for the next few days. But that was certainly an experience I got during ministry days that really are seeing this as an opportunity and acknowledging the difficulty. But people are also up there saying, we can tell the truth. This is my truth. It doesn't have to be your truth. And I'm hearing that that message coming up quite a lot, so I'm quite positive. And this is not and and this is not just an adult uh, GA. No. Your daughter is here. How is she finding it? Yes. Uh, my daughter's finding it very wet, and she's smaller than I am, so she's closer to the puddles. <laughs> and uh, but 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 she's actually having a great time. She's actually with the middle school group here. She's just going to start high school, and uh, she's having a great time. In fact. She jumped out of bed and missed breakfast to get to her camp in time. And I just saw her whole group. They just entered this hall and yeah. they were having a lot of fun. And there was someone, K Kaya from your yes, congregation, yes, was there. Yes, and they're all just so enthusiastic and she's loving New Orleans. She spent an hour telling my, my partner last night what a great place Louisiana and New Orleans is. And I have to agree with her. It's a fabulous place. Yeah, so. Great, great. And who's, who's our uh, next, next, next guest? Yes, Oh, Elizabeth. Yay. Elizabeth. Yay. Do we know Elizabeth? Hi, Elizabeth. I'm Hi. Michael. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Nice, nice to meet, meet you, Elizabeth. Tell us about your GA. Sure. Well, it's my first GA, and um, I'm coming from the First Unitarian Society in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and I grew up attending the First Unitarian Society, and I currently work there as a um, podcast producer, and I also operate our low powered radio station, which is owned, Sweet. owned by the church. It's called WMUU. It's at 102.9 FM if you're Moo. in Madison. Yes. <laughs> and it gets even better. Our slogan is radio that moves you. Yep. I did not come up with that. Um, but if you're in the Madison area, it's at 102.9 FM. You can also listen online at fusmadison.org. Um, so this is my first GA, and I'm looking forward to meeting other media people, hopefully, and learning how I can be a better journalist in the context of social justice, especially. Nice. Well, don't think that you're going to learn about being a better journalist from The View live at GA, because we're just, we're here having a lot of fun. Are you uh, broadcasting at all from GA while you're here? Or? I'm not doing any live broadcasts, although uh, Wednesday, today, <coughs> and tomorrow, Friday, I'm doing a two four-hour uh, GA specials where I'm running episodes of The View and also sermons from the First Unitarian Society. Nice. Well, it's really great to meet you. I hope you enjoy your GA. Thank you. Good to be on The View. Karen Eng, come here. This morning, I had the opportunity to run into an old friend who, who told me that every morning, every Thursday morning at 8 o'clock, she turns on her computer in the kitchen at 8 in the morning at the ungodly hour of 8 a.m. Pacific time to watch The View, but that she's never been on it. So how's your GA going, Karen Eng? Um, sane. Uh, it's very good, actually. I'm having a good time. Yeah, New Orleans is wonderful. Um, you know, this place is big, it's huge, but because it's so spread out, 
I'm having a wonderful opportunity to run into folks like you and, you know, have my five minutes, my ten minute conversation, which is so much better than just waving from 20 yards away and like, yeah, I saw you at GA, but didn't have an opportunity to, to actually speak to you. So um, I'm loving it. It's, it's great. And I'm, I'm just so hopeful. I just think this is our moment. Please, please. What are, what are you uh, hoping the most happens this week while we're here together? I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure what it looks like. Uh, I, I, I think mostly, you know, you know, Howard... Howard Thurman, uh, you know, in my heart, um, you know, may, maybe remember this moment of our high resolve. You know, so it's it's a potentially moment of potential moment of great transformation for us if we bring if we do it our best hearts to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm praying for that. Is there is there a workshop or something that you're looking forward to especially much this week? Nope. nope. You're just here. <laughs> I'm just here to I'm take just, it all in. Yeah. Okay, well, and now you can say you've been on The View, so Hi, wait, wait, I don't know who's watching us live today. And, and I'll but I'll be in the archives forever, yeah! So our, our View super fan, Karen Eng. <laughs> ta <Yay. laughs> Thank you. So I don't know who's next or why I'm even interviewing everyone. I think it's maybe somebody else's turn. Well, come sit down, Patricia Wright, and tell me a little bit about yourself and, and how your GA is going. Well, I feel like I've just, just arrived. Into the flame. Oh, into the, I feel go. like, to some extent, I've just arrived. So I'm warming up. We came quite late yesterday, flying in from Los Angeles. Um, and shall I say something? So I'm uh, on the board of the Santa Monica Unitarian Church. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was the president for several years. This was of a congregation that I had belonged to for more than 35 years. We migrated from the East Coast. But what's really uh, exciting for us and um, important is that we recently said farewell to our beloved minister and we are welcoming a developmental minister. So I think this is a really exciting and very important step for our congregation. So who's, who's your new minister? Our new minister is Reverend Greg Ward. Superb. So is there something in particular you're looking forward to this General Assembly? I'm always looking for inspiration, and I guess mostly I look at elements that contribute to the health of a congregation. I'm going to attend the uh, session this afternoon about sort of uh, geared towards millennials and, um, and bringing them into our movement. Nice. Well, it's very nice to meet you, and I hope you have a wonderful GA. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> Apparently... Uh, Okay, Ian. Uh, it's Ian's first GA. Ian's first GA. Ian. Oh, uh, Michelin. Michelin. Yeah, it's the awkward Austrian name. Oh, that's quite all right. So, uh, Ian, tell us about your uh, your GA so far and what your uh, what you've experienced. Um, so far, GA has been fantastic to me. Um, I was told it's basically you, you heaven, and it really is. Um, the only bad part about it is I'm going to waste all of my money on UU books because this is about the only place that I've been able to find them. I've already bought like Charles Nexus's, a couple books, a bracelet, and yeah, GA is more expensive than I thought because I want to buy literally <laughs> everything. Uh, but um, so far, yeah, been- as as a minister, I'm lucky if I get away with just one stole, and they're a lot more money than books, so I totally understand. God, I'm not even a minister, and I want a stole. They're just so pretty. <laughs> they re- they really are. <laughs> So, uh, where are you from? You're from uh, Palatine, Illinois. Palatine, so yeah, Excellent. It's, uh, a bit north of Chicago. So, yeah, it's um, been a nice little trip down here. Um, uh, it's my third time in New Orleans, and when I found out that it was going to be here, I figured I really should go. I miss the city. Were, were you among the, the large number of people who uh, took the train down on the city of New Orleans? No, no. Uh, I flew down. So, a lot faster, and I think a lot easier. So. Definitely faster. Definitely easier. Mm-hmm. Um, I just... I, I had a lot of friends who were on the same train, right. and they were they were just posting updates over the whatever day and a half yeah. it took to get from uh, downtown Chicago to, to New Orleans on the train. Is there something in particular you're looking forward to experiencing at GA, your first GA? Um, I don't really know. I mean, I was looking at you know all the different workshops and whatnot, and all of them just seem incredibly interesting. I'm really excited to go to a few. Actually, um, uh, my girlfriend, Caden, is going to be uh, speaking at a panel, so I'm extra excited to see her doing that. 
Um, I don't know, I'm just interested in experiencing the whole GA and actually getting involved in UU politics a bit. I'm a delegate this year, which is nice because I never knew anything about UUA politics, and so I've been able to learn over the last couple months and kind of get a basic idea. And um, I don't know, I'm just interested in becoming more involved in the church as a whole. Well, that's, that's really exciting. Make sure, if, if I have one piece of advice, it's to make it to some worship services. Oh, um, because it's, it's a completely different and unique experience to worship with 3,000 other Unitarian Universalists or 5,000 other Unitarian Universalists, and none of us get that. In our home congregations, even yeah. the biggest congregations are not quite that big. And so it's a new, it's an experience that you'll carry, you'll carry in your heart. When, when you go home. Right, great. Well, I, thank you for the advice. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And uh, say hi to our, our view viewers. Hi, you yous. How are you? And uh, it's been nice to meet you. It was lovely to meet you as well. Thank you so much. And I'm going to turn the, the, the flaming chalice over back to Meg Riley. I'm carrying the flame now. I am excited to talk to some folks who hang out someplace I hung out years ago. I was the youth programs director in 1989, and now Bart Frost is the youth programs director. Bart, and here are two youth who are here with Bart. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Eric Broner, and I'm the senior dean of the Youth Caucus. Hi, I'm Jaden Bryant, and I'm the junior dean of the Youth Caucus. And I'm Bart Frost, director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries at the UUA. So how many youth are in the Youth Caucus this year? I saw you in the hall. It looked like a lot. Well, this year, um, so far, we have 318 youth registered here at General Assembly. Is that more or less than usual? Um, it's, it kind of varies, so there's not necessarily usual, but it's, almost, it's about 50% growth from last year's in Columbus. That's fabulous. So what are the youth talking about? Um, so this year's theme is Resist and Rejoice, so obviously we have some things planned. Um, first of all, we're trying to get youth more involved in business, so we have some things, and you know, this is an election year, so we want them to be really interested. Uh, we've been encouraging them to become delegates since like the beginning. Uh, also, we have work, you know, activism, things that they can bring back to their own communities this year, so yeah. So how did you guys become the leaders that you are? What helped you to, you know, you've both really stepped up. So what helped you? Like if people wanted to say, how do I help youth become leaders where I am? What do you think they could do? Um, well, I think my, at the time, my director of um, youth ministry uh, was very involved when he was a youth um, with kind of denominational leadership. And so when the call came out for the dean position, he kind of pushed me to apply and you know, I wasn't really sure what it was. I had been leading the congregation, um, the group in my own congregation, but uh, then I took kind of a quick, big step into all the denominational stuff. So that's great. That Where are you mine. from? I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And who's your uh, youth director? Um, well, now he's our associate minister, and his name's Jonathan Rogers. The Reverend. Shout out to Jonathan Rogers for support. How about you? So I was doing the same thing. I was uh, doing a lot of leadership in my church, you know, worship guild, uh, working with the board and things like that. But I never really reached out to other churches as much except for, you know, rallies and things. So last year I went to Thrive, which is our um, it's a leadership school for, you know, youth of color. And one of the people there, her name was Ali. She was like, Jaden, like you have to apply to be junior dean this year. And I think that this would be really cool. She was on staff last year. Uh, 2016's GA so I just I decided to apply and even though I didn't have you know I haven't been to GA before I used the the leadership skills I had from other things to try to you know add to my application and I ended up getting it so I was you know I'm really excited to be here just want to say what they're saying is if you know awesome youth whether you're a youth yourself or an adult encourage them to step up to leadership because both of these young folks have just shared that it was encouragement from someone that made them dare to step forward. Bart, you want to add anything to that? We know that it's our adults in leadership, our ministers, and our religious educators who really lift up our young people in our faith. And so to encourage them is just the first step, but to also uh, support them and have their back along the way is also really important as well. Thanks, Mike. Little money doesn't hurt either, does it? No. 
you know, paying for their registrations to General Assembly or to training events, uh, supporting them along the way, scholarship money, uh, and we might even be able to match it in our office. We've got some grant money, too. I see some other youth walking by pointing at y'all. <laughs> so I know that the friendships that are made here take people back home, and how do you stay connected once you leave GA? Um, well... Facebook, number one. Uh, also texting, Snapchat, really any social media. We always, uh, when after Thrive, there were some people that their churches were kind of close to each other. So now they just kind of meet up. Their church will like go to the other church or vice versa. And, you know, we just stay connected that way. I haven't seen some of these people since last year, but like we saw each other at GA and now we're like best friends again. Like, <laughs> And my last question to you, it's a presidential election year. I'm not going to ask you about candidates, but what do you wish that anybody who's elected would keep in mind about youth and youth programming after the election? Yeah, um, I think just the really important thing is making sure that uh, youth don't feel like they're being left behind in the larger spaces because obviously, you know, the Youth Caucus is here, it's been here, and it's going to continue to be here. But, you know, the question of, like, youth representation and youth involvement outside of that dedicated space and what that's really going to mean is what I think uh, any, any future president would I'd ask them to really consider as they're going forward. Um, same thing. I really have nothing to add to that. I, I really hope that the youth, you know, feel they understand that they have a place in these conversations and that, you know, we really want them involved in the business of the association. So I'm really excited to, you know, see like what they have to offer because a lot of them are delegates and things this year. So, well, thank you so much. Have a great youth caucus. Thank you, Meg. Take care. Who's in? So here we are. We're live in our booth, Meg. What's going on in our CLF booth right now? Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. There are postcards that you can send to our prison members. We have almost 800 prison members. We're also working with uh, Louisiana youth in prison while well, working to send cards to them this year as well. You can see the action in our booth. Charles Dumond, our board member, standing there scratching himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do in Louisiana. We've got him. <laughs> there we go. Here he is. Here he is. Scratching, really? <laughs> oh, now he's trying to flee. He is fleeing. <laughs> and we have people uh, making cards. We're also really encouraging people to join the CLF. You know, we bring you a lot of stuff, everything that we can. And in exchange, we need your support. I'm trying to sound like I'm on NPR. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Can I, I really? be Krista? Okay, you be I'll Krista. Krista. I'll be Krista Tibbet. So, so Meg. I can't be Krista Tibbet. You just keep going. I'll be Krista Tibbet. <laughs> Please come and join us. You know you can be a member of your own congregation and join the CLF. And if you're at home watching this and you feel like you're here, which is what we try to do is reach you where you are, wherever you are, if we do that, please support us because everything we do costs money. We've got Lori Stone Sertoski, our tech director. Wait, she's coming around. She's been behind the camera. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? <laughs> she loves us, but she does need to pay her bills. So we actually pay her a salary. Terry, we barely pay a salary, too. <laughs> she's one of our learning fellows who comes and really learns and also shares what they know. But please come and join. Join where you are. Join on the Quest for Meaning website. And if you're here, come and see us. Come and make a postcard. Come and write on our wall. Come and take a selfie. So that's what's going on in the room. Right. Perfect. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So. I think we're not broadcasting. We're still live. And so next we have Hank and Jaco are going to come on to the show. So wait while we transition over. Come on in, guys. Excellent. There just, we go. Just the thought of us screwed up the camera. Yeah, That's right, exactly. Right Hi! So, uh, oh, uh, I'm about to sit down and uh, talk to my good friend Jocko, who I've known since I was 15 or 16 years old. So, question for you, your uh, GA question for you. Who here at GA would you like to punch? Who, is there anybody that, if, is that the right question? I'm getting no. Meg waving at me. Okay, no. All right. 
how's GA going and what are you doing at this GA? Why are you here, Jocko? Well, Why are you here, Jocko? Things are, things are popping right now. Things are really happening in a magnificent way, and so I wanted to be a part of that, certainly. Uh, I love this stuff. I love GA. I love the, face, the faces that I meet up with and people that I've known for years and get to see, reconnect with them and... I'm curious to see how we're going to respond to things. And I was just in plenary, and they're changing the way they're doing the, the, the discussions in there in, a, in a, I think, a really helpful way. Uh, no more, like, con mic. They were just talking about altering the whole climate around the pro and the con mics. And so they're really responding, I think, in a good way to the, uh, the, the energy that's arising in the movement. And uh, GA is such a... a, a, a con- Conglomeration yeah. of all yeah, this, yeah. that it's uh, it, it's really the throbbing center of uh, Unitarian Universalism once a year, and uh, it's just great to be a part of it and, and uh, connect with folks again. So I love that, love that. Oh, there's art. There was a there's art. Hi, art. There was a guy I knew when I was in LRY back in the '60s. Good to see you, Art. Oh, all right, yeah. yeah. He was, Excellent. So I, you know, I got to be advisor later when I was an adult, but. Uh, I was in ROI myself in the 60s, so I'm homebred UU and love the, the tribe here, and uh, just is a great, to- great time to be together. It, it is true. It, there, there's a great sort of camaraderie of, of, uh, of, of those of us who, uh, who grew up in the movement have, and have stayed, and, 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 and uh, whether you've taken on leadership roles or not, uh, it, it, you know, GA is a great time to, you know, I, I was certainly running into folks yesterday um, that, you know, I know from going to cons when I was, you know, in the 80s. Uh, and which is which is just great, and, and seeing us grow up and, and still be involved in this in this in our faith. Now, um, you're also what, t- tell everyone what you're doing tonight. It's also an, an important thing that you're, that's happening to, to both you and your wife Barbara uh, uh, Tenhove Wells, who is uh, um, uh, uh, what you guys are doing this evening. So let's let's talk about that as well. What's going on this evening, John? Well, it's the service of the living tradition, uh, annual huge event, and uh, we just retired in January from the ministry. So we're from, from what from what for what congregation? Oh, from the Cedars UU Church in Bainbridge Island and Greater Kitsap County in Washington, just outside of Seattle. Uh, after thirty plus years, each of us uh, laboring in the ministry fields, we're um, taking a bit of a break from the congressional or congressional congregational. <laughs> Somebody else made that mistake, so I'm uh, playing off. Okay, Play it off. Really yeah. the right, it's yeah. Good. It's very good, yeah. Anyway, we're retiring. Uh, we did retire, and so we get to walk in the ceremony as retired ministers. Yay! So that's going to be fun. Yeah. No, and it, and and uh, um, it it really is, and you know, and, and I'll I'll be sitting with you guys, and uh, I'm I'm just so excited, and um, it, it's it's a uh, you know, and and you, and 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 you and Barbara have just meant so much to. Um, uh, to me and my ministry and uh, and everything, so I'm I'm just I'm I'm so happy to be there with you and um, uh, and to be doing uh, and, and to be there and to cheer yeah, yeah. and um, well, look, watch watch for the picture. They'll put a picture of me up, and I sent a particular picture, a fun picture to have up there on the screen while they just say my name for five seconds or whatever. As they, as they, as they mispronounce your name. All right, yeah. now, now who, who am I? Who, who's are we? Next? Or, yeah, we're going. Or is Robin on next? Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Right, we gotta, we gotta keep people moving. Right, we gotta keep right, things moving. What's going on? All right, we're going. All right, bye. All right, bye. Yay! Hi, it's Asia again. I am with. Hi, this is Oshara. Hi, Oshara. Tell us where you are. I am where I live. Where you live? Uh, I live in Topeka, Kansas. And you just got recently. You will be voted into a very cool, exciting committee. What is it called? It is called GA Planning Committee. Are you excited to be on it? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to see um, how it works and how the people are going to come together and make GA happen. And, and how has your GA been? It's been great. Just seeing so many people being a part of Blue has been such a wonderful experience and having our space and being together. And Blue is? Blue is Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism. And you were in New Orleans back in March. You want to tell everyone a little about that? That also was a blue event. It was the blue convening. Yes, we all came together um, to organize so we can go out to our local communities and organize different movements and different community action events. And just for all these people to come together was just amazing. It was so wonderful. I was there too. Yay. We got to bond. <laughs> We did, and uh, I'm so happy to see you here. You look so happy. I am very happy. I'm happy, you know, even though it's raining, it's like helping my afro to even (laughs) one more wonderful. 
Southern. Yeah, it's hard on the hair. It's hard on the hair this weather. It's true. It's like um, my hair is looking like an unwound Q-tip. So, <laughs> a beautiful one. Thank you. <laughs> Yours too. Thank you. <laughs> well, I am so happy that you're here. I'm glad to be here. Thank and you. And your daughter's here. She is. She's is this her first GA? This is her first GA, so she gets to experience with the young adult group. Oh, good. Yes, and she liked it. She went to the worship service last oh, night. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Good, good, good. And different workshops, so it's good. Excellent. Yay, thank you so much. Yay. Oh. Oh. That was so good. You were still on. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, I think we're getting a second guest. I'm not sure who, so I'm just going to, we're going to keep, to, oh, Terry's coming on. Yay. Thank you. Okay. So just a quick little plug for The View. So The View, this is what we're all here for. The View is our weekly live talk show. We'll be going on hiatus for the summer after GA, but we will be broadcasting highlights, some best of series from some of our older episodes of The View that are not on our podcast. So please make sure you subscribe to our audio podcast. Go to questformeaning.org slash view, V-U-U, and never miss an episode. And now we've got Meg back. She's going to be interviewing our next guest. So keep watching, everyone. Hey there. I'm excited to talk to Julie Taylor. Julie, we've had on many times talking about trauma response ministry, which is what she does. Hey, Julie. And Julie gets into conversations wherever Julie goes, and that's what was happening there. There's, you can't see the other side of where we are, but many people are clustered around the exciting vortex of energy here. Absolutely. Julie, how's GA? GA is good. It's a little dry right now, so I'm grateful for that. It was dry this morning walking in. Yesterday was not the case. You were thinking you might be dealing with a flood trauma? <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, there was potential for. For yeah, lots of damp and lots and potentially damp energy, but that didn't happen. The energy was pretty high yesterday too. High energy. Hold the, hold it lower. Hold it lower. Um, so, what are you thinking about at this GA? What's on your mind? I'm Here, thinking. You can, oh, right, right up to you. All right. Oh, this is actually a microphone. I see. I thought it was just a symbol of a microphone. <laughs> Got it. I'm thinking a lot about white supremacy. I'm thinking a lot about how white people got to do better. I'm thinking a lot about, ooh, that's, yes, I need that one. Where did that one come from? The Allies for Racial Equity booth. I can will. get, no, really, the problem is white supremacy ribbon. I'll be getting that one next. So I've been thinking a lot about that. <laughs> uh, and actually doing a workshop. Drew McFadden and I are doing a workshop on that on Saturday. And so I've been thinking deeply about where uh, Unitarian Universalism needs to move forward, and you mentioned it in the in your sermon the other morning on, and I think I think the Black Theology of Liberation is where we have a lot of work to do and see what that has to say uh, for Unitarian Universalism in this moment now. That's where my that's where my heart is a lot right now. Are, now you're in St. Louis. Yes. Is there is there a um strong community there to support you and and to support your ministry and i don't mean just you you i mean the, the world well uh we're pretty new to st louis we've only been there about five just almost five years which doesn't seem i can't believe that uh so uh we had a i mean i have a wife and two kids who are pretty little and uh we have community at where uh the seminary where my wife works so that's good and we've got friends and and we do have there's there's four UU congregations there, and uh, I love being able as a community minister, which I am. I love being able to to work at all four of them. It's a really neat, uh, I guess, community in that some places where I've lived, a community minister is really is only connected to where they're affiliated. And here, I while I'm affiliated with one congregation, I get to serve all four of them, and I really like that. Um, I like the way like social justice stuff the four congregations often will work together on projects and there's a real collaborative sense in that that's encouraging and hopeful so i'm curious you know where both in st louis and in our national and international movements you see hope that we actually will confront and deal with white supremacy do you where the signs of hope are for you oh it's so early for me to think that critically let me think <laughs> well I, I do think that one of, that some of the signs of hope is our, our three presidents. 
with Unitarian Universalism, the, the fact that the, the board was able to, to see and to experience and to take on a vision that was something bigger in terms of, of a structure than we've ever done before that points towards hope because that's a disruption. Uh, I just I just finished reading a book uh, by uh, Kelly Brown Douglas. Oh. Uh, Stand Your Ground Theology? No, oh. I, it's an older one. It's actually oh. Sexuality in the Black Church. Oh, okay. I, yeah, where, she, where she says uh, disruptive, uh, th- I'm paraphrasing, but disruptive words without disruptive action maintain the status quo. Yeah. And so that piece where where three presidents, uh, 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 this triumvirate of presidents, right, that disrupts, the, that's actually a disruptive action. And more disruptive actions is where I see hope. Disruptive actions is where I see hope. And, and when, when I say disruption, some people get freaked out by that. Like, well, oh, that means I can't get to work because, the, you know, they're blocking the street. That's one kind of disruption. But actually, having three presidents is disruptive action because it's disrupting business as usual the way we always, have always done it, and that's where I see hope. Yeah, when I saw it, last week we were live when their letter on, on severance pay came out, and that letter was groundbreaking. I mean, they were real about it. And this severance pay thing, there's nothing new about that. It's been going on <laughs> forever. And um, for them to tell the truth about it felt, I thought, this is a good for platform for whoever is elected president to actually get real. It's, uh, it's a, an action, like you say, even though it was words. The action of disrupting silence with those words was profound. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting point. I think... Um, I hear a lot of the people of color saying, until I see action, I don't believe your words. And why should they? I think in the Berry Street lecture yesterday, which was five voices speaking, all of the people of color heartbreakingly and plaintively said, can I trust you or not? And I don't trust your words. I want to see something. And... um, how long have I heard those questions asked? I, you know, I just celebrated my 25th year of ministry, and there's nothing new about that. So I, part of why I'm thinking and, and really delving more deeply into a couple of pockets right now, too, is I also just uh, finished the cross, in the, lynch, the cross in the Lynching Tree, which is James Cone's most recent book. And one of the questions that he has in that book, he, he did... You know, researched and could not find one prominent white theologian that ever spoke out publicly against lynching. Not one. And it, when when I was reading that book, that struck me so deeply. And I thought, where were the Unitarians and the Universalists during lynching? I'm I'm going to guess that some maybe some individuals, maybe pockets here and there, but where was the public outcry from our clergy? and from our congregations around lynching. If it was there, if, if anybody out there knows that, well, our congregation did this, we worked towards the legislation to, to, to ban lynching and to criminalize it, I would love to hear about that. Because I'd like to know if we were. My, unfortunately, my concern is that we weren't. And so that also then brought me to the current time when uh, black people being murdered in the streets uh, particularly by law enforcement, but not necessarily by vigilantes in this way, is the new is lynching, and it's happening right now. So then, are we going to be silent again in the public forum about that in the future, in 50 years from now, when you know my grandkids, maybe, hopefully, someday, perhaps, uh, are are reading theologically again? Hopefully, someday, I hope. Are, is there going to be a gap? Is there going to be an absence? of public theology from white Unitarian Universalists talking about criticizing, calling out, and demanding justice for the new lynching. That's a really good point. You know, sometimes I think Fred Garcia, who was the coach for a lot of our public witness work back in the day when I was at the UUA, used to say it's not public witness if it's not public and you don't have witnesses. And sometimes I think we honestly don't know what public means anymore. So we think if we post something on our Facebook page that we're public, but we're not. And you're right. Unless we are on record, you know, in public places, people are not going to know. And as you say that, I think, you know, I'm from Minneapolis the day before I left the ridiculous, ridiculous non-indictment of the murder of Philando Castile came down and um, 
you know, I've been on social media about it, but I haven't spoken publicly. And you're right, if we don't speak into public forums, we are in essence silencing ourselves. So, yeah. And of course, you know, there are times for white people to shut up and not be the voices. So it's, it's a dance. But I think being on record is just super important. Right. And I, I, that distinction is really important. I don't mean white people should be the voice, but we need to be a voice to denounce this. And, I, and I'm not saying that, that white UUs haven't. Sent, I mean, since Michael Brown was murdered, there, have, there has been more. But that also took a while. And so how are we going to sustain this and make sure that, that the record uh, the record reflects the work that is happening in our congregations. You know, uh, President Leon Spencer this morning talked about this is not, I think it was, I think it was this morning. Some of the days are rushing one into the other right now about uh, this is not just an inside job. It's also an outside job and an inside job. We do need to continue to do the work inside and we have to do the work outside and we have to keep that, that dynamic moving so that we're not just having an internal conversation that never affects anything happening outside or even doesn't, re, you know, respond to. Yeah, one of the things that Lena Gardner said one week when she was here with the Blue uh, Monthly show is that, you know, black people are in the streets because that's where they have power and really they don't have access to other quarters of power. But the white you use have access to a whole lot of corridors of power. And what are we doing in those corridors of power? And that's one of my questions. And I know CLF is going to be working with Meadville and the UUA to sponsor some webinars for people now that we're in the era of Trump. How do, you, how do we do this police reform? Because it's still possible, even with a DOJ that's under <laughs> Confederate rule, you know. <laughs> so um, there's still stuff that can be done by by white people with power that I think we haven't done yet. Well, thanks for all your work. And so is the trauma ministry here in some kind of way? The, tra- the UU Trauma Response Ministry is always here. We, we run a little quiet. Uh, we're always in the background. We're here. Uh, it, you know, if something, if something large were to happen, of course, we would be utilized. But we are here at, uh, at GA with a booth. Uh, we've got a booth in one of these rows here. I'm a little disoriented, but we're in one of these, one of these rows. And we've got a workshop on Saturday afternoon at 315 uh, in the 315 slot. And so that's another, uh, another way to come and connect uh, with, with the UU Trauma Response Ministry. We have website. We're always here, and we're always here working for congregations. Uh, you know, kind of in, in line with a little bit of this, there are, there's more concerns. You talked about the Trump era, and there's more concerns that congregations some have about their own safety in their buildings, especially if they are trying to be public and trying to speak out. Are we going to get a rock through our window? What's going to happen? So just as a as a plug or, you know, kind of outreach, a lot of people don't know that the UU Trauma Response Ministry, we actually do congregational preparedness uh, audits and workshops. So we can at, we actually go into congregations and do walkthroughs and do safety and security audits. What's, what's really working? We look at the policies. Do you need more policies? What do you have? And, you know, do comprehensive reports and help help kind of shepherd through making sure that you have you're confident that you're doing everything you can to be good stewards of your resources when you're about ready to step out and be more visible so just so you know that is totally cool i didn't know that well thank you for all your work thank you for letting me say absolutely (laughs) that's great and i think we're ready for our next guest and before our next guest comes i just want to do a correction charles dumond was not scratching okay here we go Wow! Wow! Well, I'm glad you had, I'm glad you uh, glad you, you responded from that, uh, Meg. That was really great. So, oh wait, oh, what's going on? Are you good? So, I got my uh, got my pal Ronnie here, and um, who's the minister? Are we in? Are we in? Are we in the frame? Uh, who's the minister in Tucson? And um, so, uh, tell me how your GA is going. Tell me about you were talking about your wife's uh, um, uh, booth and and the thoughts around that, which sounds great. I want to hear, we want to hear more about that. But yeah, how's GA going? How are you, how are, you know, how are things going? How are you feeling about the, um, you know, our faith and it, you know, and our yearly expression of it uh, in a big group? So GA is going very well. Uh, I was, I was pretty nervous coming here. Yeah. Uh, less nervous as it approached, actually. Uh, hopefully, hoping that when we, when we got in front of each other, it would change some of the dynamics, and I think that's actually uh, been proven out. I'm really grateful to uh, the UUMA board for the way that they 
walked right into all the issues that's been uh, boiling up, yeah. um, took it head on, and represented uh, themselves honestly, and uh, not necessarily with one voice, but with perhaps uh, one vision. Um, so that was uh, that was healing in a way. So I I think that I've experienced some healing denominationally or associationally. Um, not that the work is done, the work is only beginning. What? Are right. you sure, really? Uh, well, for a moment I thought it was, but then, no. Uh, and, and, and New Orleans itself is an amazing town. I had, uh, I've never been here before, and it is an incredible place to walk around. So, and then, uh, so my wife, Katie Ferris, she is opening a store at GA this year, a booth, she's got a booth, and, um... It's based on basically it's U U Chach, right? Uh. And it's 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 based on this experience of you go over to a, a, a friend's house who's in another religion, and you know you walk into a, a Hindu's house, and very uh, soon you're able to tell by some accoutrement or symbolism, artwork that you're in a Hindu's house. Yeah. And the same is true of many religions. We've noticed that it's not so true for U you U's. You're as likely to see a Ganesh or a Buddha when you walk into a U U's house as uh, you are any sort of UU paraphernalia. Yeah. So uh, she has decided to create artistic um, uh, art paraphernalia chach that represents us on our values and is made on with those values. So like all the materials are sustainably sourced, handmade, fair trade, all that stuff. So it's it's promoting our values both in. Um, in, well, see, it's like here. This is a bag. Hello. This is total promotion right now, and I'm sorry to hijack. It's, 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 it's but the name of, of a Light Spring Press. Light Spring Press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. See? And then this also on the other side. Just a sample. Right. It's awesome stuff. It's beautiful stuff. And, 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 and we were saying that how, like, in, in Transylvania, uh, you know, uh, you know, traditionally, most Unitarian Universalist homes would have a... Um, um, uh, um, um, would have a, uh, a picture of the Edict of Torda uh, there. And, you know, cause, so there is that sense of like, you know, oh, this is who we are, and, and, and if people come in, can see what's going on. So, you, are you doing good? Do you want to come in? Do you want to, want, to, want to chat? You're good? All right, okay. And the nice thing about it, too, is that it, it, promotes, it promotes who we are to other people, but it also reminds who we are to ourselves, to ourselves right. which is nice. Good. All right, oh, Joanna! All right, oh, we're, uh, I'm off, and you were in, and then, yes, what, yes, what? No, we have eight. What? CLF member. What? <laughs> Please, come here, come here. So I'm very excited. We have a CLF member here who I'm meeting for the first time. And this is Clarice. And tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. I've been a Unitarian for 38 years, but this is my first year to join CLF. But my favorite part is the view, so I try not to miss it. There's a wide variety of interesting shows and interesting people. And I've just met um, the people that I see every Thursday, and it's wonderful. I got so excited I couldn't speak, and believe me, I'm <laughs> not often without words. But they do such great work, and you learn a lot. And sometimes I'll replay the shows. It's great, and I'm happy to be a member. I enjoyed the Sunday shows also, but really the view is what sort of got me started. Oh, great. Well, it, it is very cool to have you here. Now, this is not your first GA, is no. that correct? No. My first GA was in 1983 in Vancouver. Every 10 years, it's in, you know, you know it's in Canada, so that was my very first one, and uh, I went one year uh, for 10 years in a row so I, I came last year and I had been away for a few for a few years but now I'm active again and excited great and and a member of the CLF which is is wonderful okay last question is so so far how how is this GA compared to others that you've been to I think we're being asked to well <laughs> GA is different things for different people but always lots of opportunities to learn and I think we're being asked to be more thoughtful about our faith, more thoughtful uh, not that Unitarians aren't thoughtful anyway because we're always involved in things and so I think that's sort of a, a, a charge and I think um, we're being asked to uh, 
listen. Yeah, to listen. To listen and be open to the possibilities. And you, we always, we have so many opportunities to meet so many different people. And I think it should be on everybody's bucket list to try to at least get here. Well, thank you very much for coming thank on, you. and I'm so glad thank I got you. to meet you. Okay, Lori Stone's Lori Stone Sorkowski. Hi, my Hi. friend Joanna. Hello. So good to see you. So, Lori is here. You may know her from the CLF, but I am interviewing her in a different role that she has, which is with the organization Allies for Racial Equity, A R E. So, there's lots of different groups, and what does your group do? Well, the Allies for Racial Equity organizes to help white Unitarian Universalists confront uh, whiteness, white supremacy, and racism. And thank you. I'm going to hold the mic. Apparently, I'm in charge now. <laughs> and we are working uh, to do education um, and leadership development among Unitarian Universalists, and we also help with your congregations. Uh, so give us a call. Check us out at uuare.org. Okay, I saw, you know, on Facebook, things just kind of fly by, but I saw something about like $10,000 and ARE, and, and what's that about? You know, it's one of my most uh, prized accomplishments to date, is that I was able to screw up with technology last week, and I accidentally launched the fundraiser a week early that we were going to do for the membership meeting tonight, um, but... Instead, what we did is we ended up raising $10,433 before the opening ceremonies of GA for to, to benefit DRUM, Diverse Revolutionary Unitarian Universalist Multicultural Ministries, and BLUE, the organizing collective known as BLUE, Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism. It's so exciting. Okay, first I have to say, Lori, like, like your even your mistakes are amazing. So, 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 so this is going to that. This does not go to ARE. This is going to those groups. That's right. It's a complete pass through. We figured, you know, they've probably been incurring a lot of extra expenses to get ready for GA, and we also know that there's a lot of anxiety right now around money in general, and we just want to make sure they all had some extra spending money to help cover maybe any budget gaps from an unforeseen expenses they had during GA. Um, that's awesome. Now you also mentioned something about a meeting tonight. Who is that like only for y'all or? Well, we do call it our membership meeting, but it is open to everyone. We call it um, current and aspiring members. So you, everybody's welcome to come. We're going to gather. If you're here in person, we're going to gather at the uh, vending area in the exhibit hall just behind the wall here. And you'll be able to tell who we are. We'll be pretty loud. And if you are off site, you can watch us via live stream on our ARE, which is UU Allies on Facebook. UU Allies on Facebook. What time? We're going to start 645 Central Daylight Time. And we might get on live a little early. Okay. Any other things you need to do? You just have to tell us right now. I know you can tell us a ton. Oh, it's but burning. It's burning. I have to say one more thing. Okay. <laughs> One more thing is we are also, in addition to the fundraiser, we have a petition online right now. You can go to our, our homepage, uuare.org, and you can sign a petition to basically sign the pledge to say, I am reaffirming the decision of the UUA Board of Trustees to fully fund the Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism. This is the $5.3 million uh, campaign that uh, has been... Uh, we are very excited about it, and we want to just have everyone be able to reaffirm that decision. And so uh, sign the pledge. And what are you up to now? We are up to over $75,000. Thank you for asking that, Meg. As a pledge to the $5.3 million campaign that the UUA is, is running on behalf of Blue. Okay, and uh, hold on, Meg. I got Got to uh, ask something real quick, which was they announced yesterday next year's Berry Street Essayist. It's our own Reverend Meg Riley for next year. And just had to call that out. I'll pass you the microphone now. It's 
Honestly, it's a little bit embarrassing because I just did the 25 year thing and I was like, really? Because I just talked. And they were like, different groups do these choices. Are we all going to sing happy birthday to Meg? <laughs> no, 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 we're not, Hank. We're not. We're really not. So um, I want to introduce Charles Dumond, who is a prison pen pal, among other things. I could say like a hundred things about him, but in this moment. I'm not a- scratching. <laughs> he is not scratching. Notice. Notice his hands there. They're scratching nothing. But and they're at the moment writing nothing. But sometimes they're writing to your prison pen pal. What what's that like? It's um, it's 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 really transformative, which is sort of an overused word, right? So, to recognize that there are people who are Unitarian Universalists, and then to to connect with them as you use, uh, given that they as uh, I think the words Mandy uses, we we live in the free side, and they live on the incarcerated side, and. And understanding more about what that means to people, and yet people be able to continue to have faith in spite of all that. It's it's really it's really transformative. That's the word I'm stuck with. So. It is really exciting. Yeah. We have almost 800 prison members now, and right now we're going to walk over to a service. How many project. pen pals do we have, and how many do we need? We need. <laughs> we always need pen pals. I think we have a backlist of prisoners who want pen pals. We have a couple hundred. I think yeah. about 300, but. Not everybody wants one, but more people want one than have one. So we're going to walk over to the service project this year at GA, which, Lori, did you explain the service project already? Okay, so the service project, I'm going to try to walk and talk, and look who's walking to the service project. We're walking, we're walking to the service project. And the service project, this year's service project is... Guard me so I don't walk into anyone. This year's service project is sending sending cards to youth in prison in Louisiana. I mean, the things that youth are put into prison for is preposterous, and we could talk about that. And someday may there be no youth in prison. But while they're there, may we reach out to them. Some of them don't get any mail and mail is such an important thing and so we're partnering with a Louisiana group and Terry will turn the camera in a minute and show you these tables where people can sit and there's Hannah and Jorge and other folks writing cards and this this is the project here is to you can see the big stack of cards that's already been written but there are many many more cards to be written So this is an area in the General Assembly where you can relax and color, but also where you can send a kind word and a pretty color to somebody in to somebody in need of something. How's it going, Hannah? It's going so awesome. We just had the middle school day camp here at GA come, and they were all spread out. And what was so amazing about that is that they, right now, we're partnering with Flick, which is Friends and Families of Louisiana's Incarcerated Children. Louisiana has one of the highest rates of... um, children and youth who are incarcerated in the country and so they were writing postcards to folks their own age um, wow yeah what was so, that? that must be amazing for them to even think about kids their own age in jail yeah i know it's amazing for me to think yeah. about there's something so really wrong almost 200 done Woo! so if they can do almost yeah. 200 grown-ups at this general assembly can do the other 800 that's and here's Mandy Goheen, the Ciela Prison Director. Hello, everybody. Oh, I get to hold up this to your mouth, up to my mouth. Hi, everyone, and um, greetings from General Assembly. Really exciting. Um, what What do you want to know about? Tell them. Just tell, tell them. them about the. Well, I have really awesome news. Our prison ministry, our membership is up to 781 as of yesterday. So out of all the members of the CLF, 781 are part of the prison ministry. And we're developing programs for you to start your own prison ministry in your congregation. So please be in contact with us about that. And this afternoon, there's going to be a workshop about how you can do that. And it's in... The room number washed off my hand, but I will. It's in the program book. 215 216. 215 216. Excellent. We'd love to see you there at 1 30. Thank you. Thank you. Show somebody coloring. All right. You want to say hello, everybody? You're live on the view. Hello. All right, everybody, we are live here on The View with some colors of our postcards. 
Here's mine. So, so what made you decide to want to color today? Oh, I don't color well, but this will uh, hopefully be all right. <laughs> and, and what message are you saying to I'm our... I'm saying our... be strong and know that many of us are thinking of you. Be strong and know that many of us are thinking of you. And how about yes. you? I said uh, people do care. Be strong. Be strong. Wonderful. And you want to show you the picture that you're coloring? Lovely. Oh, that's great. Great. Well, thank you so much. All right, so uh, may I, Lori, just get our camera set for a second. And I'll say some closing words. We are so glad that you joined us live on The View at General Assembly. Uh, once again, please subscribe to our audio podcast at questformeaning.org slash view, V-U-U. You can also find all of the archive videos on our YouTube channel, but our questformeaning.org slash view channel will get you links to everything. Uh, join us each week on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's been wonderful to see you here and so long and farewell from the Church of the Larger Fellowship. Bye-bye.